Welcome back to part 4. Last video, we were done with sprinting as the final example, but I forgot to explain a little bit of gameplay tag and what's Im how important this can be. Now, let's go back to the condition of the uh, the walking. Now, you see I sent a specific class. However, I don't want to get a class because if you do a class and check the class of reference viewer, if you go here, you see I'm depending directly on walking being referenced directly on the player. However, the other states, they're not really referenced in here, you don't see them. Now the reason you don't see them is because I'm not calling it by class, I'm calling it by gameplay tag. If you drag from the base state co manager component, you have a get gameplay, get, sorry, get state of gameplay tag, which gives you a direct reference without relying on a specific class. That means if I clear this, compile, save, and just connect this up, it will convert the class, sorry, it will convert the reference to a class. And if you go to the reference viewer, you will see this disappearing. Let me refresh. It's gone. This means references will not be made in the player character this way, if you use this method. However, if you don't really care, just do it the way we did it. Doesn't make a difference. In any case, right now, since we're done with this one, I'm just gonna nullify this because we don't care about it right for for now. For now, we're, we're gonna come back to it later for the sake of debugging and trying things. Now you know why state gameplay tag is important. So if you have two states that have the exact same tag, it will only give you one of them. You might not never reach the second one unless you're getting it by a specific class. So whenever you create a state, always, always have a different state tag, as well as double check the can perform the state. However, now we're done with the walking and with the sprinting and item. Let's get into more practical things. Let's cover, since we, we covered the, uh, on the beginning, we spoke about the animation blueprint. The second video, we spoke about the weapon, sword and shield. And how we were we in common and uh, common common pose? We're not in combat. We're not doing anything. So let's start with equipping, and how that links to the weapon, and how does that link to abilities as well as equip state. Now, I'm not gonna cover the ability in this video, but rather more worry about how weapons work with the uh, uh, the pose we, we have, and how that will link to some changes happening somewhere. Let's go to unarmed. Now, it's not really good to have it called unarmed when we only really have a sword and shield, you know? So let me let me duplicate this one. We're, still, we're not gonna use this one because this is already made for you. And the goal here is to create something from scratch so everyone can understand what's going on. So let me duplicate this one. I know there are some aspects I didn't cover yet. We will come to it, but this is a good start player protector underscore pda let me move this to the protector just to be consistent now here we're going to change the data asset which we just created player protector and now we can change things freely however we want and let me close this one so we don't confuse ourselves okay now we have back to the abilities per state now the states will be created based on whatever you have in this array so we have hit okay i don't care about hit for now let me delete that falling jumping and death okay i don't care about death let me delete that jumping and falling very similar to idle and walk if you go and play open the debugger again how do I jump? It's control spacebar. It's based on an event, so it doesn't run on tick. However, falling runs on tick. How do I know? Go check. For example, if you go to jumping, I have a tick function and it tries to perform falling. Now the conditions for falling are what? Can perform is is falling and the z-axis being less than zero that means i'm not heading up i'm going down if both of those are true it will try to run falling 
and falling in return will try to run either when I'm not moving or try to go back to walk if I'm going down and moving right away and so on idle has conditions by the way just in case you guys don't know the only exception where I'm bypassing the condition by not clicking it is on the beginning so idle right here it has a condition now the condition for idle being well first of all is controlled by the player character the second condition will be the vector length is equal to zero that means I'm holding I'm staying still in my place okay back to the data asset now enough theory okay let's start with I uh, let's start with equip now we do have an equip already made for you I don't want to just to choose something that I have I'm just gonna create something from default now back to the protector folder that we have create a new blueprint class and the class will be character state okay blueprint underscore protector equip state right now let me assign it here equip state you'll find it right there now do I need to put something in the briefies and gameplay time? The answer is yes, but let me not overwhelm you with this right now. Let's go back to protector equip state and actually assign values to this. Okay, what do we have on the right side? Stay gameplay tag? Oh, it has to be unique, right? State dot equip. Okay, what's the conditions to equip? Does it really have conditions? Well, the answer is yes. You will want to know when to equip something and when not to equip it. All right, so let's do the conditions. What 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 can we think of? Well, me knowing that I don't have a weapon in my hand. That's a good condition. Okay, how do I know I don't have a weapon in my hand? Well, first I need to know when do I have a weapon in my hand. In the player character, there's a component. So get the performing act actor in this case, which will be the player character. Get component by class. And it has a combat component. Okay. How do I know? That asset to the bottom. Oh, base combat. Okay, what do I have in base combat? Quite a bunch of nodes. Some of them something called get combat status. Now combat status, it's an it's a container, and this container can have multiple gameplay tags. One of the tags that can dictate if I am in combat or not is a gameplay tag called in combat. Okay, so one of the conditions to enter equip state is to actually not be in combat would be a good way to put it, right? That's a good condition. Okay, let's put it. Okay, but when does this ever come in? How about after we equip it? So it can be something like, well, how do I add to this container? Any state, once it passes this, it will try to perform the start state and let me stress this as much as you guys can hear always call the parent if you're doing a regular type of state what do I mean by regular a state that is not passive now I'll come to passive later if you guys want me to in most of my demos I do not use passive but that's a very specific use case so always use the parent now the reason I'm saying this this will be relative to you later in the future but when you start a state first of all you're starting a state timer which will which is something con controlled here control state time control for example if you start a state and you want it to end after five seconds well you take this on and you assign this to five and how often does it update okay it's not time controlled this is more action controlled which is also an input input control as well now we don't need it to be time controlled we want it to be animation controlled later on too so okay other than the timer what also happens well let's check the parent go back up again start a state we'll call a parent thing which is in c++ and let me tell you from now it has nothing it's empty these are a bit important set current active state okay on the state manager so the state manager which is the state component we were using a while ago has something called get current active state and set current active state that would be a safe way to do it or, or to call it okay is this also the same thing you guys are seeing here on the left 
current active state? The answer is yes. This is how you know which one is active at any given point by using this one. All right, so it does, now you know it sets something. Not only this, but it also tells you some state was activated. Okay, on state activation, it's a dispatcher. That means I can assign on state activation. Now I know which state gets active, activated whenever. Get yeah, class. You can know the class, or you can just get the tag. I, you can switch on any tag, and you need to, you can know which state is active whenever it gets activated. That's a neat way to do it. Okay, now you know why I'm stressing enough that you guys have to call the parent. Okay, aside of this, we were discussing using combat status and assigning it this to it. Well, let's do that. Back to start and modify combat status. Okay, let's add, not remove, in combat. Okay, now how do I equip? When do I call this to run? It's already set up for you, but let me show you. It's on equip, unequip input, or it's in two places. Attack input, which is the left mouse button. You see here, I'm trying to run equip. If equip fails, try do attacking. So you have two options, the attack input or the equip input. Equip input is, num is, uh, is R on the keyboard. It's assigned on the mapping. If you don't need it, just remove it. Doesn't matter. I'm just going to use the left mouse button. And I don't care about this one, so I'll just delete it. Okay, so we just to make sure everything is clear. This is related to uh, input component. We're going to discuss this later. And this is failing, we said. Okay, so right now it might not fail because we already have equip. Oh, and by the way, one more thing. If you try to uh, run without a valid class, it will return false as well. This will get it from the data asset. Or if you call it directly, it won't get it from anywhere, it will create it and assign it right away. But if you don't have a specific value, like equip here, if you don't have equip, it will return false as well. So it's, it's not going to be uh, game crashing for you or anything. So let me try. If I try attacking, lift mouse button. Wow. What did this return? True. Why? Because we are not in combat. So this will return true. If we play, let me check the debugger. We are in fact in protector equip state, but we're stuck in it. And we didn't put any weapons in our hand, and we didn't do any equip animation. All these fancy things come with abilities in the next video. So see you in the eyes in the next one.